How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in because we have a, a choice. Amen. We have a choice to rejoice or you have a choice to be miserable. And again, if you're miserable, don't let anybody know you're a Christian. Stay home till you get it right. Amen. <laughs> or come to service and get it right. Amen. Praise God. Ah, uh, yes. Would you turn to the book of Galatians chapter 6? Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6. We're quite familiar with this. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 7, would you read it with me, please? Do not be what? Deceived. deceived. Hello. Okay, that's it. We can go home now. <laughs> Don't be deceived. See you later. <laughs> oh, praise God. Don't be deceived. <laughs> Don't be conned. Don't be misled. And don't be lied to. It says, God is not mocked, for whatever man sows, he will what? Also reap. Again, I've, I can't emphasize enough that this is a law that nobody gets away with. Whether you're a believer or not, nobody gets away with it. Amen. Whatever you sow, you reap. Amen. Amen. For you who sows to his flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will reap of everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. In other words, don't grow weary while you're sowing in the spirit. Because you eventually outrun what's due you because you sowed in the flesh. For it says here, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And so many times we quit. People get distracted. They get deceived. And then they stop. They stop sowing. Let me share with you that sowing is an area where it must be consistent. It's not a one-time event. It's a continuous event. We sow constantly. We sow with our mouth. We sow with labor. We sow with finances. We sow with helps. Sowing is a constant thing. So we cannot grow weary while doing good because it hasn't come. Again, many people are waiting on God while they're sowing, and they quit thinking that God doesn't hear them. But he does hear. See, sowing also allows me and you to get spiritually positioned to receive. Amen? So the enemy is going to do everything he can to Stop, infiltrate, penetrate, distract, or mislead so you get off course. Amen. So in this, this sowing and reaping, there's an area where what we sow, we reap. So there's an area where you and I must be steadfast. Amen? Amen? Amen. We must be steadfast no matter what. How many of you know God is looking for people that are steadfast? Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. Would you uh, speak this with me, please? 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. Hallelujah. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. 
And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. It says, let each one give as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things and may have an abundance for every good work. So, again, what you sow is what you reap. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. So many times people are, God is asking someone to do something and they're not doing it in the fullness yet. Amen. So they haven't reached that point where God can release the fullness. Is everybody with me? Amen. So one of the things, again, the enemy tries to distract us. He tries to get us off course. He always tries to interrupt something because he knows that God is trying to get, look at the Lord came to bring life, life abundantly for all of his children. Amen? So in this, that spirit, uh, spiritual law of sowing and reaping is a constant. It is a constant. So you and I are constantly sowing. Now, what we sow, in other words, doesn't he say something? Seek me with all of your heart. See, so many times people just seek the Lord like they're writing a letter to Santa Claus. And he's nothing but a fat, jolly demon. Hello? Does everybody understand that? overrated, misled, and worshipped like an idol. Think about what the world looks during Christmas time. They're all looking at what? Giving gifts or what they're getting. I mean, children are interested in what they're getting, aren't they? I mean, some adults are still interested in what they're getting, you know what I'm saying? But in this, if we seek God with all of our hearts, it says we will find him. So, again, it goes back to that law, doesn't it? If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. How much do you want of God? See, some people only want a little bit of God and still want to live their own life. And that's why they're double-minded, unstable. Because unless you're willing to live his life and surrender yours, you can't have the fullness of life. And it says that he brings us in places to be trained up so that the fullness of Christ and his life can be established in us. We're not here for a Bible study. We're here for a training session. Why? To hear what the Spirit wants to bring to us so there's something that we continue to grow and get to the arena where we have the fullness of Christ. So that we can truly say it's no longer I that live, but him that lives in me. So he who sows sparingly shall also what? Reap. reap sparingly. But he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Amen. So in this, this is very important that we grab hold of this because so we don't do something half-hearted. Because so many times we get into something and do it half-hearted, then we want someone else to finish it. That means you're only going to get partial. If you get anything. Amen. Luke 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6 and verse 27. Would you read it with me? But I say to you, who hear, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. That's like sowing and reaping, isn't it? But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is it that, to you? 
for even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is it to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Again, it's the same arena of the law of sowing and reaping. Does everybody get this? The same measure. In Matthew 6. See, we should always be looking for an opportunity to sow. Amen. <coughs> I wait because I want the Lord to send the things that I'm supposed to sow. Amen. Whatever it may be. God will send things across our path to sow. Whether it's helping someone, no matter what it is, he's always some. Why? Because he knows that law is there. And when he does, and if somebody's not coming across your path to sow, that means you're to sow prayer. Amen. You sow, sow, sow. Until you sow what? Amen. Because then you we get to a point where we know that God is. He's moving in something. He's trying to get his position, get us somewhere to receive something. He always trying to get something to us, but we've got to sow our way to get there. Amen. Oh, glory. If we could grab hold of this, it's life changing. Amen. See, because so many times people are looking, they're always thinking worse first. Right. When we got to look at that everything is, so when trials and tribulations come, we know that God is trying to remove our impurities. We know that he's, he's trying to expose our enemies. But one of the things he's trying to do sometimes is to get us to adjust, to get back on a certain path. You know, do you ever go down a street and it says detour? Hello? So in that, you don't try to go to the plate or run that sign over and go because you know there's danger. There's something, construction or something's going on there. I've tried it, believe me. <laughs> and uh, so you got to go that detour or you're going to get in trouble or you're going to get caught up in traffic or something's going to happen. Sometimes God puts a detour in our life that we don't like. But the end result is to finally get us into that position so we sow into that place where he can meet us. Remember, he wants to bless you. He's not out to take. He's out to bless. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the time, many times he comes to steal, kill, and destroy because we didn't go on that detour sign. We went to the wrong area. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19, Let's speak it together. What does it say? Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wow. It says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So again, what you're seeing, if you are sensitive and attentive to the area where you know God is trying to always get you to a place to bless you, you know that he's with you. He's for you, not against you. So in this area where we're trying to sow, we're so, so again, the enemy is going to try to get you to sow something else that you're not supposed to sow or sow in a place you're not supposed to sow. Amen? Amen. 
So how we see things, in other words, what we believe, we perceive, don't we? So whatever you're receiving, you're perceiving. So if the enemy's giving you a flawed belief system, your perception is incorrect also, and you end up going down the wrong path. And you may be sowing down the wrong path, thinking it's the right path. And then you're not, nothing's coming, nothing's happening for a long period of time because you're sowing down the wrong path. Is everybody okay? All right, let's go a little further. It says, verse 23, But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, this is what the Spirit is trying to bring across. He says, I am calling. There is a call right now to loyalty. There's a call to loyalty. And it's the loyalty to his cause, not man's. Does everybody got it? It's a loyalty. See, so many people are more loyal to their own cause than they are to his. And that's where he says, you cannot, you're going to be loyal to one and despise the other. And many people are, they're on a teeter-totter. One day they, they're loyal that afternoon. They're despising. They're, it's hello. They're double-minded. So in this, God is preparing us and he's saying, look at, I'm looking for those who are loyal. He didn't say perfect. Does everybody got it? He's not looking for perfect individuals. He's looking for people that are loyal. Amen. Amen? He's not looking for anything of talent or ability. He's not looking for any of those things. He's just looking for someone that's loyal. And loyal is going to take consistency. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take that arena where you're really willing to Drop whatever it takes to follow, just like the disciples did. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Anybody hot in here? <laughs> Nobody raised their hand. What's the matter? Come on, aren't you hot for the Lord? Okay, cool. <laughs> Second thing, I thought people were going to pass out when I went to there. They thought I was going to make it colder, but I didn't. I saw people starting to... <sighs> they were praying in tongues when it wasn't time yet. <laughs> Wouldn't want anybody to slip on the ice. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. Would you speak it with me, please? Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time what? Before time began. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life, to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a what? Preacher, apostle, and teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until the day, that day. Hold fast 
the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from me among whom also Philagius and Hermonides. Uh, the Lord grant mercy to the household of Ornaphius for the often for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out with very zealously and found me. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. Again, he is expressing here the area that he is loyal. And he also expressed that there are those who will betray him. Does everybody understand? See, if you're not loyal, then you're disloyal. Amen? God is looking for those who are loyal to the cause, to his house, to his will, to his purpose. Amen? It is a call of loyalty right now. It is vitally important that we come to that place where we are loyal Consistent without fail. Amen. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, one of the things that the Lord requires is that we go the extra mile. People don't go the extra mile unless they're loyal. Amen. They don't look for the extra mile. They make excuses to go the extra mile. Because they're not loyal yet. They haven't reached that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants. Servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. What an honor that is. Moreover, it is required in stewardship that one be found what? Faithful. One be found faithful. That's someone that's becoming loyal. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from the Lord and not from himself. Amen. Not from himself. So he's looking for those who he can find faithful. You know, there's that area of being loyalty is being loyal to the call, loyal to the purpose, and loyal to the destiny. Loyal. Why? Your desire is to fulfill each part. Not partially, but the word fulfill means fulfill. Not just do it Halfway, fulfill, and willing to go the extra mile, loyalty. In First Peter chapter five. Oh glory! Is everybody there? First Peter chapter five and verse six. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Be sober, alert. Be vigilant, consistent. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. In other words, get out of position. It says resist him. Let me share with you, if you're not an individual that's loyal, you will not be able to be consistent in resisting. I'm going to say that again. If you're not loyal, you will not be consistent in resisting. Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. One of the things that God searches in the area of loyalty is motive. An individual's motive behind everything, an individual's intent. He knows. He knows that arena. He, he tests us. He, he 
tests the heart. He sees what's there. He knows whether we're loyal, whether we're trying to manipulate what, what's going on. And a loyal heart is a person that's after God's heart. David was loyal to the Lord. Did he make mistakes? Yes, but he was a man after God's heart, wasn't he? All of his days. From the moment the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Yes, he made mistakes. But he never, he did never came against God's house. In fact, he wanted to build it. He never lost his first call. He stayed until it was fulfilled. He didn't move anywhere until it was fulfilled. I'm telling you, when the Lord sends me to a place, I don't move until I'm thrown out. Hallelujah. <laughs> or cordially invited to leave, I guess that's the same thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we need to be loyal. Amen. We need to be, listen, we need to be alert and consistent, which is discipline. How can you be loyal without discipline? Amen? Uh, go to sec, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 9, would you read it with me? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal, everyone say royal, royal. priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are, but now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Again, we are a loyal priesthood. So one, one of the things the Lord is trying to get, no, uh, let me share with you, first of all, to be royal, amen, royalty is inherited. That's something that you don't earn. It's inherited. When you come to Christ, you are ordained into a royal priesthood, a royal family. Amen? Now, loyalty is earned. So even though you may be a royal, out of a royal family, you still might not be loyal. Has everybody got that? And God is trying to bring where it is one, where the royalty is meshed with loyalty that we may be expressing him in the fullness. Where we are loyal because we are royal. Amen? Has everybody got this? Praise God. Let's go to um, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Again, royalty is inherited. Loyalty is earned. Would you say that to deny self is loyal? Amen. If you're consistently denying yourself, you will come into loyalty, won't you? Why? You'll be loyal to the cause of God and not to the cause of self. 2 Timothy 4. Second Timothy 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. I charge you there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Hello. Uh, but according to their own desires, they will what? They, because they have what? Itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers. For they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. They will turn their ways from being loyal and turn their loyalty to something else. He says, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Be loyal. Amen? Be loyal. Itching ears will cause disloyalty, influenced by pride, offense, lust, and ungodly counsel. 
I'm going to say it again. Itching ears will cause disloyalty. They will be influenced by pride, offense, lust, and ungodly counsel. What it does is it causes an individual to fall out of divine order. When you are loyal, you always maintain a divine order. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In fact, that is a desire in you to maintain divine order. It's a desire in you to maintain divine protocol. Remember, we are of a higher order now. And because we are of a higher order, we have got to become more loyal to that order. Amen. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? But know this, what? That in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women and men, loaded down with sins and led away by various lusts. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge. They learn the word, but never fall into loyalty. They've never grabbed hold of being loyal. Does everybody got it? You know, somebody can be, this may sound strange, somebody can be faithful but not loyal. Amen. In other words, they can show up at work on time and faithful every day, but not loyal to the job. Amen? Amen? In other words, when they show up, they don't go full heart when they get there. Amen. So somebody can be faithful and not loyal. And it's the same thing in the kingdom. So many times people look at ministry as a job. It's not a job. It's a life. <coughs> and when you get concerned about how much you get paid, then it's no longer a loyalty. Amen. Now it's a job. Amen. God makes a way. Amen. That's why when we labor onto him, he's the one that makes way. Is everybody okay? Luke 12. Oh, hallelujah. You know, when you go into a, 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 an arena of training, so many times, because we have this tendency in the carnal arena that says, okay, I got it, I'm done, I'm good. I don't need to finish the training. And in, in that, then that person cannot become loyal because he only got partial. Does everybody get it? When God is trying to bring us to a place where we're able to complete what he's asked us to do, then it releases that promise. And the more he does it, he starts off with little things and then begins to give us more and more and more. And sometimes it goes back to little, 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 whatever. But anyways, as he finds you more consistent you're earning a trust with him. And he sees that you're... Now, you may go and complete it, but if you're not doing it with all of your heart, then it's not loyalty. Amen? So, so many times people do things just to get something from God. What about you do things and not look for anything from him? Because you love him. Regardless of what. Whether, he, whether you get blessed or you don't get blessed, it doesn't matter. You labor onto him without looking for anything. See, people that are always looking for something, no matter what they do, can never be loyal. Because they can never be trusted. Is everybody okay? 
Do you understand what's going on? God is trying to bring us to a place where we begin to see these things all the way through. Why? Because he wants to get us to a place where it's no longer we that live but him. And so he gets us into a place where he does bless us. But he blesses us. Don't, don't you like surprises? I love surprises. You know? And, and, and God is, a, he, he, he's a daddy that loves and gives us gifts and surprise us. You just never know what's going to happen. But if you're faithful and being loyal and fulfilling with all of your heart and doing everything, that's where the word says, putting your hands to the plow and don't look back. Do what you got to do. And you do it all of your heart. Next thing you know, man, all of a sudden something comes that you would never expect to happen. Wow. And you knew it was from God. It's like, man, I thought you forgot all about that. He don't forget. We do. <laughs> Luke 12, 41. Amen. We're seeing a difference in an area of somebody that might be royalty, but they're really not loyal. And God, again, wants to bring that royalty with loyalty so he can express himself in fullness. In verse 41, let's read it together. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And Jesus said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household and give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and be drunk, he is obviously not loyal. Amen. He may be faithful, but he ain't loyal. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him point his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes will be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, for him much will be required. Of whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. Wow. Wow. Faithful and wise servant. It should be one that is loyal. Amen? 1 Samuel chapter 24. In verse 9. Now there was a... Uh, King Saul was chasing David. <laughs> trying to kill him. And David also wrote, uh, or David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say, um, indeed, David seeks your harm, seeks you harm. Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you into my hand in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you, but my eye spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, David was still loyal to the house of God. Amen. He was still loyal to the divine order and the protocol. He was still loyal to it. Do you understand? And God honored that. For moreover, my, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my heart. And I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on, on you. But my hand shall not be against you. Is that powerful or what? Because, the, see, David understood God's loyalty and royalty. He understood when God's hand was on someone that, that per, he wasn't going to come against it. And in that, Dave understood the loyalty of being faithful. And God honored him. Amen. Honored him for that. 
I mean, here was this king chasing him, but he still called him father. And he tried to kill him over and over and over, man, ambushing him and everything. And David had an opportunity to kill him. But he wanted to just show him that he still honored him and respect him as king because he was still alive, even if he didn't agree with him. Hello? Even if he didn't agree with him, he still honored and respected because he was royalty in the eyes of God. And David maintained a loyalty to God by respecting him. Everybody got that? It's so powerful. This is what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for people that are after his heart and willing to be loyal all the way to the end. And Matthew 25. The call to loyalty. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 25. In verse 14. Matthew 25, verse 14. Is everybody there? For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents to another two and to another one. To each one according to his what? Ability. Own ability. God will never give you any more than you can handle. Amen. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had two talents and gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the, those servants came and settled accounts with them. And so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered me to these five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides it. What did he do? He used it. He worked it, didn't he? Why? Because he was loyal. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents. And as the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Don't you want to hear that when you get before the Lord? Well, then you have to become loyal. Amen? You must become loyal to the cause. You have done good, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many and enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you would be a hard man. Excuses. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. Lie. <laughs> and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have it back for you. It's yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy bum. Oh, servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would receive back my own with interest. In other words, at least give it to somebody else. There, see, because he wasn't loyal, was he? He was only looking for his own. He was loyal to his own cause, not for the cause of the Lord. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken from him, taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Whoa. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised. Amen. 
2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Would you speak it with me, please? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men or loyal men who will be able to teach others. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. He was loyal, wasn't he? He was not only faithful, but he was loyal. They, Paul always went the extra mile. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So remind them of these things. Charge them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the heroes. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And shun profane and idle babbling, for they will increase in more ungodliness. Wow. 1 Corinthians 9. First Corinthians nine nineteen. Let's speak it together. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, and that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I also became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. He was loyal to his call. Amen? Now, this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be a part, partaker of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we do it for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I what? I discipline. Everyone say discipline. discipline. My body. And bring it to, into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Remember, discipline starts the call of loyalty. Amen? Amen. You can't be consistent without discipline. Amen. Matthew 7. 721. Matthew 7 and verse 21. Let's speak it together. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, and I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Why? They might have been faithful, but they weren't loyal, were they? Amen. See, loyal comes from the heart. Amen. Faithful is an act. You can act faithful, but not be loyal. That's where Jesus said, many come and they worship me with their mouth, but not with their heart. Why? Because they're not loyal. 
Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Why? Because if he's faithful, he will not compromise. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Philippians chapter 2, in verse 15, uh, no, Philippians chapter 2, I think it's verse 5, Philippians 2, 5, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus, oh hallelujah. I pray that every day. <laughs> Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But made himself a what? No reputation. No reputation taking the form of a what? Bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being ready and being found in appearance as a man. He what? Humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Yeah. I would say that is loyal. Even to the death of the cross. In other words, he was going to complete no matter what. Amen. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Again, this is an area where, you know, somebody may be at work because they're, uh, they're faithful and showing up at work, but the boss leaves and they begin to grumble and complain. They begin to do stuff not full-hearted. They, they begin to walk by things instead of fulfilling their job or their chore or their duty, whatever they're supposed to do because loyalty hasn't set yet. But I'm telling you, when loyalty sets, you're a different person. You no longer live for you. You live for him. When loyalty truly sets and you're willing to go the extra mile all the time. And you're willing to say no to man. Amen. When loyalty sets, you hate man pleasing. You're a God pleaser. Because when you please him, you'll have peace with men. Amen. Amen? I want to close at Revelation 17. In verse 7, 17:7. 7, 7. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life. Why? Because they will be deceived from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not and as yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is and the other have not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seventh and is going to the perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind 
and they give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful because they are loyal. Amen? They are loyal. There is a call to loyalty. I encourage you to search yourself out and examine yourself. Whether you're faithful, whether you're just royal, or whether you're loyal. Amen? Amen. It's time to check it out so we get in that position of loyalty. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, we ask for your forgiveness of everything that we've done that has not been of the heart and the fullness. We repent for anything we've done halfway and not seeing it all the way through. We repent for all of our grumbling and complaining. Far be it that we should think that you don't see it all and know it all. So Lord, we, we take this opportunity and we give you our heart in exchange for your heart so that we become loyal servants unto you and stewards. That we would earn and gain your trust in everything. And that we would use those things you've given us to expand your kingdom and bring your will here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we are honored and blessed to be called, to be chosen, and to be faithful. And let's so honor you with becoming loyal to you in all things, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.